Hi, Rich Folly. I'm here on the Book View Now set, bookviewnowpbs.org, and this is BookCon 2015. And we've reached our last segment of the day with our guest host, Gail Foreman and Sarah Dustin. It's so nice to have you. You look lovely in yellow. Thank really you. Nice. A little pop of color to keep you awake on yes. this Saturday. And I just found out that for both of you, this is the last stop on your I tours. I feel like virtual wine, everybody. I yes, we, we should be, we should be Cheers. having a big Cheers. old glass. I want some. <laughs> I gave you some. That was a glass of virtual wine. Okay, I'm drinking it right, right now. Thank Pick you. Pick your virtual wine, Rich. Well, congratulations. Those are big moments, actually. For St. Maybe for you, but you have a paper back out, too. And for Gail, for, um, I was here. And it's a very cool thing to, like, finish that all off. It is. And it's, I think... Um, it's been a really fun, and I've traveled all over the country, and um, I've met a lot of readers and seen a lot of readers. What's been really cool about this particular, since I'm coming up on like 20 years of writing books. All right, high five, 20 high years. High five, 20 years. That's um, amazing. That is cool. Having girls come through that are like, I started reading your books when I was in middle school, and now I'm in college, or I started reading your books in high school, and now here I am with my baby on my hip. You know, I mean, it's it's seeing how the readers just keep coming back to YA is pretty amazing. So. When they stay with you is the most impressive thing for both of you really great careers in writing and you've done other things too but here you have these uh, readers who've stuck with you and in fact new gener like uh, even a younger generation is now pushing into the stuff that you've done how cool is that to like have, sort of have some staying power in this business I mean that's amazing to me because I've seen people with I've done quite a few events with Sarah and it's people who started when they were 13 and are 33 look at me doing math right. and they're still reading you right which i think speaks to your work and the fact that even if you're writing about the teenage years i'm still reading your work right. and i'm about to turn 45 so and i'm about to turn 45 Gail and sarah I and i have this i'm one day older than sarah destin she it's kidding. It's one day yes one day yeah. older one day older um, i like that you both admitted and said your age out loud. It has many people here who don't even say that. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm owning 45. Bring it. I'm ready. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it likes for me to my 40s to start figuring stuff out, yeah. so I'm not going to start hiding it now. Well, um, I think what's really cool about YA, like you were saying, people continuing to read it, is that for some people, it's like high school was really intense, and they didn't want to read about high school when they were in high school. It was bad enough to just be in high school. <laughs> you so were one of those I people. I was one of those people. I was not happy at all in high school. But if you have the distance of adulthood, you can kind of put yourself back in there with that safety. Mm -hmm. of, you know, you can put your back on the emotions, but you're not reading it and then living it also. So I think there's something to be said for that. But your stories, I mean, I know you always talk about your books being about high school, but your books, I always call you the Anne Tyler of YA. Very nice because you. your books are just these very intricate, nuanced, subtle family dramas. And yes, they're about high school students. And yes, there's usually always like a lovely romance there, but it's really the family drama that is always center stage and we most of us live in families like that is incredibly resonant throughout your life I think that's true and I think the family are the people that you can't get away from for better or for worse it's, and, and it's those relationships like the, we talked earlier today about relationships with your friends changing and how friends can kind of come and go and sometimes you lose friends for various reasons but your family you are always going to be with like it or not you know um, so, my mom tells me that all the time. I know. You're yeah. stuck with me, like it or not. Like I'm like, it or all right, not. I'm going to work this out. So, and the, it's the ongoing, it's the, the relationships have to change in order to survive. And so, um, I think, I never think that my books are about any one thing. You know, I, I think that's why I have a hard time boiling them down to like one sentence, which people like in this right, No elevator pitch. No yeah. elevator pitch. It's like, because when I was in high school, my life was never about one thing. It was never just about my friends or about my after school job or about my mom or about school. It was everything. Well, that yeah. makes it hard for the idea to come crashing through the roof into your lap to start writing. If you're, if it's about everything, you, you never know when it's going to show up, when right. the next bolt of inspiration is going to Will you up. talk about how this book came to be in, in terms of the idea crashing into your lap? Because it was kind of a interesting story. It was. I um, was working on another book before this book. I have a tendency to write books that don't how work. How many books have you written that I, you have? I have... 13 abandoned manuscripts and 12 published books. So if you look at the numbers, that's not very good. Um, but I was working on another book, and when I was in high school, like I said, I was I was kind of unhappy, and I, I went through a pretty dark period where I was just not dealing with my sadness in the most ideal way, and I'll just say that to protect my parents, like me. Um, so, and I always wanted to write about whatever I did, it just felt too close, and it was just too weird. So. I'd started this book about a girl that was in a similar situation. The book was not working. I abandoned it, and I was like, ugh, you know. And then, as Gail pointed out recently, that sometimes you have to come to a story sideways. So I started to think after a while, what if I came at it about a person who's going through this dark time, but from the family's point of view? Um, and what happens when one member of the family is suddenly 
in a place that nobody has been before and, and it's a whole new world and how that disrupts all of the relationship. So that's, and once I came at it that way, it opened it up. Yeah, once time. you sort of reposition. But I was gonna say, if 13 abandoned manuscripts, I was gonna say, wow, a brave move to abandon a manuscript, but you've done it 13 uh -huh. times. 13 and I don't know how many, if yeah. that's a normal number for a, a I, I think she's doing the brave move now, which is she's normally, Sarah, wants to start a book right away, and she's kind of saying, I'm not gonna start, I'm not ready. Right. Yeah, and that's the brave move. I'm worried that the failed manuscript between the successful ones is like part of my process, and so since I haven't started the one that's going to fail yet, yeah. that I'm setting myself back. No, I, I think you can change your process. I think I can I think change you my say, process. Like, I'm going to do it different. And when I put the picture of those, I put them all out in my driveway, um, and I took a picture and I put on my blog post. I said, "Impressive or depressive, you decide." <laughs> But I think some, if something's not working, at least I'm getting better at realizing it. Like yeah. I used to write the whole book and then be like, "This yeah. book is not good." Then I would write like. Now you only date for two weeks. Now, like, yeah, this now, is not now this now is not marriage only material. Like, you know, 100 pages rather than 300 pages. And, but walking yeah. to the unknown, not knowing what the next book is, I'm sure is frightening. Um, if you're still getting adjusted to the idea of not knowing, you know, like it sounds like you like to know, and if you don't know. And you just kind of go, oh, I'm going to go, and hopefully it'll arrive. That's the sort of brave part. It's a leap, leap of faith. faith. Yeah. It very much is. And with St. Anything, it was like, I was like, I got nothing. Like, yeah. I, I was just like, I'm sitting here day after day in my office. Did you show up every day? I, well, I just sat in my office and hoped to God that something would happen, you know? And it's yeah. really hard sometimes. Like, you get this great support from other authors on Twitter. But you also see everyone else is like, hashtag I'm writing, I'm writing. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not writing, I got nothing. If they were hashtag I'm writing, they would not be on Twitter. That's hashtag exactly. I'm writing. That's yes, right. exactly. So That's right. you kind of have to put on your blinders and, and just say, and I just, you have to have faith, which is scary for me. I like to yeah. be in control of everything. So, and obviously I'm not, but I give myself that feeling. So, but I, I really, you know, this is the end of the tour. If I have one egg, you know, a one place, one basket to put all my proverbial eggs in right now, saying anything is that basket, and I'm, it's a good, it's a good place to put it, so yeah. I'm thrilled that it's there. So well, we'll I'm see. thrilled that the, you spent the end of your tour, and the end of your tour, I'm glad we're like together. right yeah. here <laughs> on the set of Book View Now at PBS.org, yeah. Yay! How about a high five for the end of the tour, baby? Woo! Yeah. Like crossing yeah. the marathon finish line. <laughs> Woohoo! 26.2. We did it. We did it. Well, and you Can close out our show. It's Yay! like there's just something so symbolic about that. I'll you know, take Rich, that. Thank yeah. you for being in this very special, special moment. Yeah, thanks it's really for cool. I feel like I was like part of something. You are. So, yeah. You're part of it. We're all yeah, here thank together. Thank you. <laughs>